Good morning, church. The Lord be with you. It's good to see everyone this morning. Those worshiping in person and those worshiping with us online, we're glad to have you. Thank you for carving out time to make worship part of your weekly rhythm. We gather for worship to glorify God and so that the people of God might be sanctified. And that's just a big churchy word for shaped and molded into the loving image of Jesus Christ. And we will turn our attention to those acts of worship that shape us into the image of Jesus Christ in just a moment. But before we do, we have a few announcements uh, to get us all on the same page because if the people of God are moving in the same direction, we can accomplish a lot of things. And we have a lot going on. Uh, in your bulletin, you'll notice that there's a ladies' conference. That is August the 21st from 9 until 3. Uh, so if you uh, are interested in that, DD needs a headcount so that uh, they can make proper planning for that. So if you would, contact DD if you would like to be a part of that conference. As well, we have Vacation Bible School coming up July 12th through the 16th from 9 until noon. So if you have children that are pre-K through 6th grade, we would like for them to be involved in that. So go ahead and get them registered. You can register them online. As well, if you are particularly one of our online worshipers, or maybe you just don't like uh, paper. If you're like me, loose paper just kind of gets stacked on my desk. That's just that's one of my growing edges, I suppose. Uh, you can also utilize our e-bulletin. Um, and if you would like to use the QR code on the screen, you may do that to access the bulletin. Or you can go to ph.church and you can get to it from there. It's a full worship bulletin. You can have it right there on your phone if you would rather follow along that way. If you are a paper and ink type person, we have those too. Those are in the narthex for you. The children's department is selling t-shirts. Those are in the narthex for $10 a piece. This is to help offset some costs for Vacation Bible School. We also want to do t-shirts for VBS so that our kids have something to take home with them and our workers have something uh, to wear and then we can wear out in the community so that people know um, that Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church has put on the Rocky Railway uh, Vacation Bible School, that things are active and things are happening, so we want the community to know that. So if you would, uh, the t-shirts out in the Narthex, they are $10. Um, just take a look at those, see if there's something in your size or close to your size, and make a $10 donation. You can take one of those beautiful shirts home with you. Uh, our youth group is still doing their fundraiser to go to camp, so if you'd like to contribute to that, that board is right there waiting on you. Now mark your calendars, July 18th, mark your calendars for July 18th from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. at the Royal Avenue Pool here in Florence. We are going to have a church-wide pool party. Um, youth and children really get a kick out of this, but it's really for all ages. Um, uh, most of us adults have a really good time watching the youth and kids splash around in the pool. So come and enjoy an evening of just fun and fellowship. Food will be provided. This will actually happen the Sunday after VBS is concluded. So all the kids that have come to VBS will be invited to this church event. What we want to do is have some fun events to get everyone involved, but we also want to let the community know that we are back up and we are running on all cylinders and that they are welcome to come encounter the grace of Jesus Christ through one of our programs. So if you would, uh, and you're available for that night at the Royal Avenue Pool, July 18th from 6 to 8, come and hang out and have a good time. No strings attached, just a good, fun-filled evening. If you're part of the Shady Ladies, I won't say who you are. Um, you will begin meeting this Thursday under, at uh, 6 p.m. under the carport where you met before. Y'all, we have Senior Saints, Bunko, Choir Practice, Knit Wits. We have Praise Band Rehearsal. We have Wednesday night Bible studies at 545 for adults and beginning at 6 for the kids. We are back up and moving on all cylinders. So if there is some way that you can get plugged in, you want to get plugged in, learn more about Pleasant Hill or more about Jesus Christ, we have something for you. I encourage you to get involved in any way that you can. Now, I want to make one more announcement, church, because part of the worship service today may be just a touch different for you. Before I read our gospel lesson for the day, uh, before the sermon is preached, I'm going to offer an introduction of myself. Now, know ahead of time, I have not lost my mind. Uh, I have been asked by the North Alabama Conference to provide this week's adult discipleship podcast, and it is based on the text of our sermon this week. So I have to introduce myself so that people listening on the radio throughout the week know who they're talking to. So when I come up to the microphone before I read the gospel text and say, 
Hi, I'm Andy Curtis. I'm privileged to be the pastor at Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church in Florence, Alabama. Y'all play along, okay? Just play the part. Know that it's for a bigger congregation. It's, it's going to go out conference-wide, so I appreciate them asking me to do that. I'm honored that they, that they did that yet again, and I'm glad that your service gets to be part of that because the sermon that you hear today is actually going to be the podcast that goes out to the entire annual conference later on this week. So thank you all, our traditional United Methodist worshipers, for being so, uh, uh, so much a part of this. I'm glad to have you along for that part of the journey. Today is Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to you, 4th of July, however we would like to refer to it. It is good and proper for us to celebrate our history It is part of our story, part of who we are as Americans. And we should celebrate and we should have a good time. We should thank all those that have played a part in the freedoms that we enjoy. So if you have served in our armed forces at any point in time along the way, thank you so much for your service and thank you for the freedoms that we get to enjoy. That is part of our history. It is good and proper that we celebrate it. That's what we do as good Americans. As good Christians, we also take this day to remember that this part of our story, our Independence Day story, is part of a bigger story. It's a day to remind us, not only just as good Americans, but that this is our Father's world. God is the God of North America. God is the God of Central America. God is the God of South America, of Europe, of Asia, of Africa of Australia, of all creation. So as Americans, let's celebrate our American heritage. But also on this day, as Christians, let's be reminded that God is the God of all creation, that God is the God of all people and all nations, and we are part of that great story of God's grace being poured out on all of creation. That, as well, is worth our celebration. And with that, I will turn our attention to the reason we've come, and that's to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear this word of good news, church. God loves you, and so do we. Welcome to worship at Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church. All who would, please pray with me. Lord, as we worship today, open our eyes to see your kingdom in simple meals, in acts of humility, in lives centered on loving kindness. And together the people of God said, Amen. All who are able, please stand and let's join together in our call to worship and the entrance of the light of Christ. may be seated. We've come to the time in our worship service where we offer our prayers and our praises before God who is faithful and just to listen and be present with us in the midst of our trials, our storms, and our victories. So what names do we have to lift up before God this day?
Do we have any praise reports to offer today? How has God been active in our life? Or we call these in the annual conference glory sightings. What glory sightings have you had this week? Happy birthday, Miss Gail. Do we have any unspoken requests you would like to make known by the uplifted hand? God sees that hand and knows our heart. God is with us. That is great news, church. Whether we are in the valley or on the highest mountaintop, God is the God of each, and God makes this journey with God's people. Won't you pray with me? God of all creation, may our hearts overflow with gratitude for your abundant blessings in each of our lives. Lord Jesus, your, your banquet in the wilderness with the masses was simple, but it was perfect. Everyone came hungry, but in the end, everyone was put at peace and everyone ate their fill. Your king's banquet contrasts the gluttonous banquet given by Herod in which no peace was had, and John ended up dead. Lord Jesus, we need more banquets like yours. We come to you hungry for peace and justice. We come to you with heavy hearts for sick friends and loved ones and those serving in our military. We come to you longing to learn how to be your children in the world, and we ask that you break the bread of transformation for us once again so that in the midst of our struggles we might be filled with your grace and our hearts might be put at peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, May your life-giving power fill us afresh and anew this day so that we can, through our lives and through our various ministries, compassionately bring life to others. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I would like to call the children forward. Anyone that's under uh, the age of sixth grade, you're welcome to come forward for our time with the children. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? Having a good 4th of July so far? Good. All right, so you see that picture on the back wall there. What's going on? What do you see? You see a family sitting down to eat. Do you guys ever do that? What's the best part about sitting down to eat with your family? The eating part. I hear you, man. <laughs> a man after my own heart. We, get, we go to the table to eat. That's right. Um... Is it always important to have a big feast like what they're having right there? Or can a family dinner or lunch be just as important if it's something a little more simple? It can, can it? I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to make for lunch, before I started school, she would make me cheese sandwiches. You ever had a cheese sandwich? It's just two pieces of bread, a slice of cheese, and mayonnaise. Man, I loved it. It was like delicacy for me. But you know what the best part was? My mom, she would make that sandwich for me, and we would sit there, and we would talk to one another. And we would learn about one another, and we would grow together uh, as a mother and a son. And that is time and memories that I will always cherish. So especially now, when it's the 4th of July week, and you guys are probably going to have a lot of hamburgers and hot dogs and potato chips and apple pie and all that kind of stuff... Make sure that you take time to sit down with your family, to spend some time with them, talk to them, and learn about them, because family is pretty important to God, so it should be pretty important to us. Don't you agree? I think so. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your great love. Thank you, God, for families. Thank you, God, that we can have feasts out of cheese sandwiches and sour cream and onion potato chips. 
Thank you, God, for meeting us in our families. In the midst of our conversation, help us grow nearer to one another, whereby we grow nearer to you. And when we draw nearer to one another and to you, you're glorified, and it makes the world a better place for all people. We offer this prayer in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And all of God's children said, Amen. Y'all are dismissed to go back to your seats. All who are able, if you would, please stand and let's join together in our next congregational hymn. <clears throat> gospel reading this morning. Now remember, church, I'm going to offer an introduction of myself. This is not for your benefit per se, but it's for the podcast audience that will be listening throughout the week. Fret not, I've not lost my mind. Hi, I'm Andy Curtis, and I'm privileged to serve as the pastor at Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church in Florence, Alabama. Now let's open our hearts and minds to this reading from the gospel according to Mark, Chapter 6, beginning in verse 14. Now hear these words. Herod the king heard about these things because the name of Jesus had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and this is why miraculous powers are at work through him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others were saying, he is a prophet like one of the ancient prophets. But when Herod heard these rumors, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised to life. He said this because Herod himself had arranged to have John arrested and put in prison because of Herodias, the wife of Herod's brother Philip. Herod had married her, but John told Herod, it's against the law for you to marry your brother's wife. So Herodias had it in for John. She wanted to kill him, but she couldn't. This was because Herod respected John. He regarded him as a righteous and holy person, so he protected him. John's words greatly confused Herod, yet he enjoyed listening to him. Finally, the time was right. It was on one of Herod's birthdays when he had prepared a feast for his high-ranking officials and military officers in Galilee's leading residence. Herod's daughter Herodias came in and danced, thrilling Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the young woman, Ask me whatever you wish and I will give it to you. Then he swore to her, Whatever you ask I will give to you, even as much as half of my kingdom. She left the banquet hall and said to her mother, What should I ask for? John the Baptist's head, Herodias replied. Hurrying back to the ruler, she made her request. I want you to give me John the Baptist's head on a plate right this minute. 
Although the king was upset because of his solemn pledge and his guests, he didn't want to refuse her. So he ordered a guard to bring John's head. The guard went to the prison, cut off John's head, brought his head on a plate and gave it to the young woman, and she gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard what had happened, they came and took his dead body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Congregation, you may be seated during our choir anthem. Damon was 10 years old. He remembered going to church every Sunday and coming home to a meal, a meal of roast potatoes and carrots. They had this meal just about every week because his mom could put it in the oven or the crock pot when they left for church, and it would be ready for them when they got home. It was a simple meal, really. Nothing flashy. Roast potatoes and carrots. 
However, as the family sat down at the table together to share in this meal, they would talk about what they learned in Sunday school. They would talk about the pastor's message. They might even talk about what people were wearing in church that day. They would talk about their week. They just spent time together talking. They would feast on their simple meal, and they would grow together as a family. The Sunday afternoon banquet was simple, and it was life-giving to Damon and his family. It was the best of banquets. Still in his 10th year, Damon and his family scraped together enough money to go on a family vacation, and they chose to go on a cruise. On the next to last night of the cruise, everyone was to wear their best outfit, for this evening was to be the captain's banquet. It was a magnificent banquet. It was a feast full of pomp and circumstance. David or Damon feasted on escargot and duck all orange. Everyone looked beautiful and fancy in their clothes, feasting on exotic foods and drinking the finest of drinks. It was magnificent. It was an expensive feast. It was far removed from the simple Sunday afternoon lunches that Damon was used to. At this captain's dinner feast, other things were different, not just the extravagance of it. It was not just Damon's family sitting at the table. If you've ever taken a cruise, you know that they sit multiple families and guests at the table. Damon and his family didn't have the opportunity to invest in one another because of other families sitting at that table, a couple of which were two girls in their mid-twenties who had just finished their collegiate studies. These girls seemed to attract the attention of Damon's dad, and it seemed as though they were flirting, but nah, that couldn't be. Later that evening, after the feast had run its course, Damon's mom discovered Damon's dad in the room with those two women. As you can imagine, irreparable damage was done to the family that night. Though the feast was extravagant, it was far from life-giving. It was life and relationship taking. It was the worst of banquets. Though the names in this story have been changed, I assure you that it is very much a true story. It is a tale of two banquets that remind us that sometimes the best is also the simplest. Herod had a banquet. It was a birthday feast, literally fit for a king. It was full of pomp and circumstance. The best of the best were in attendance, and they were dressed in their absolute best. The food was great, the drink was flowing freely, the decorations were magnificent, and in the midst of the banquet, a young woman dances before the assembly. Her display captivates Herod so, and he offers up to have his kingdom to the maiden for her talented display, and after consulting with her mother, she makes a request, I want John the Baptist's head on a plate. You see, even though the banquet was extravagant, it was not life-giving. In fact, for John specifically, it was life-taking. It was the worst of banquets. Immediately following Herod's banquet in Mark's gospel, Mark tells us of a different banquet, another king's banquet, a banquet that is offered by King Jesus King Jesus decides to host a banquet of his own, and it is a very simple banquet. Though lots of folks did attend, you know the story, upwards of 5,000 people came to this banquet. The meal was simple, bread and fish, but there was plenty to go around, 12 baskets of leftovers to be exact. Those who attended sat in groups and they enjoyed each other's company. They talked, they invested in one another. The decorations and the scenery around them was God-painted. It was the natural landscape and it was the green grass upon which they sat. Everyone who attended King Jesus' banquet that day ate until they were full. Though the banquet was simple, it was life-giving to everyone in attendance that day. 
it was the best of banquets. Herod's banquet and King Jesus' banquet remind us that sometimes the best is also the simplest. We live in a complex world, a world of extravagance, a world that tells us over and over that more is better, but I challenge you to remember that sometimes the best is also the simplest. Because it's not the extravagance of the banquet that counts, but the life-giving grace with which it is infused. I'll say that again. It's not the extravagance of the banquet that counts, but the life-giving grace with which it is infused. A few examples. Sometimes life-giving banquets of ministry looks like God's people handing out sausage biscuits at the local homeless shelter or missional church. Everyone goes home full. That's a king's banquet. And that is ministry. Sometimes life-giving banquets of ministry look like God's people whipping up big plates of spaghetti or here in our corner of Florence, Alabama, chicken stew and taking it out to our homebound and sick members of our congregation so that those who are often forgotten are reminded that God loves them and so do we. That's a king's banquet, and that's ministry. Sometimes life-giving banquets of ministry look like God's people simply taking time out of our busy schedules to sit and have a simple and intentional meal in a corner booth somewhere with someone who is struggling with life's issues. Those who are hurting are given a safe space to share and process all that they're going through. And by our presence in that holy space, they're reminded that the King of Kings is walking with them. That is a king's banquet, and that's ministry. Sometimes life-giving banquets of ministry happen around a simple meal of bread and wine, where Jesus bids all to come to the table and feast upon His grace. A table that is open to all people so that anyone and everyone might come and encounter God's overflowing grace. That is a king's banquet. And that is ministry. You know, I dare say that God's people, and specifically the people called Methodists, have always done good ministry around tables. It's just kind of in our DNA. It's, it's who we are. I'm convinced that many a person has encountered God's goodness while enjoying the humble goodness of a Methodist potluck. The reason I think for this is because we know that it's not the extravagance of the banquet that matters, but the life-giving grace with which it is infused. So as we go forth into the world to love and serve God, May we do so with the reminder that sometimes the best is also the simplest. For in these simple moments, these simple meals, these simple encounters, we can literally become for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By meeting others in their time of need. And it is in those simple and intentional meetings that the Savior continues to reach out and extend overflowing grace to all who partake. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a simple meal set before us, church. A meal of bread and wine. A meal that is a king's feast. This is not a United Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. Jesus bids all to come. If you say yes to this invitation, Christ himself bids you to come join together in the king's feast. If you have not gotten your prepackaged communion elements yet, uh, they're in the narthex on your way in. Feel free to mill about and get them now so that we can all share in the feast together. But for now, here's the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another.
And we do this, church, because we know we haven't adequately lived up into this invitation. So let us pause silently to offer up our sins and confessions before God. Then I will lead us in a prayer of confession and pardon. Please pray with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have all been forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Church, we have been forgiven, and for that we are thankful. All who are able, please stand and let us affirm our faith in this forgiving God through the historic words of the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let's lift up our hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When our love failed and we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You made covenant to be our sovereign God, delivered us from slavery in Egypt, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and Savior. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he offered himself up, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do it to remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his king's banquet. And together, the people of God said, Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. this time if our vocalists and instrumentalists would make their way forward for our closing hymn. <laughs>
receiving the benediction, please be reminded that we have offering plates on the prayer rail and also as you exit the sanctuary. If you would like to contribute to the mission and ministry of Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church, your financial contributions would be appreciated. It takes money to make ministry happen. That's just the world that we live in. We give, not out of obligation, but out of joyful hearts. We respond to God's goodness in our lives by first blessing us. This is why I like for the offering to be at the end of the worship service. We have our invitation where we respond to the word we've heard, but then we also have the time of giving in which we respond to God's goodness in our lives. Thank you, church, for your faithful and generous giving. You are a wonderfully generous church, and for that we celebrate you. For those of you worshiping online, if you would like to give, visit ph.church and you can give using our homepage, or you can text the word give to 256-801-2055. Now church, I encourage you as you leave today to go celebrate the 4th of July in ways that are meaningful to you. You'll probably gather around simple meals like hamburgers and hot dogs. Some of you might have splurged a bit and you have ribs and some other stuff smoking in, the, uh, in your outdoor kitchens or whatnot. I encourage you to take this opportunity to find ways to enjoy these meals in ways that share God's grace with your friends and with your family. Now receive the benediction. Sometimes the best is also the simplest. This week, intentionally share a meal with your family, talk, laugh, and love, and be reminded of God's goodness. As you go into the world to love and serve God, go knowing that the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with each and every one of us. And together, the people of God celebrate by saying, Amen.